everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of Guardians of Haven. Still almost said Nether War. Wow, that's going to stick around in my brain forever. Uh, still of the Night is tonight's episode's name. Thank you for joining us for your weekly dose of superhero shenanigans. My name is Alex, and I will be your humble game master this evening. Tonight we are playing Mutants and Masterminds, the world's greatest superhero RPG, which is produced by Green Ronin Publishing. It's a D20 system that focuses on exciting superhero action. The character creation system offers unlimited customization options to create your superhero. And one of my favorite game mechanics ever is found in Mutants and Masterminds, and that is the use of hero points. Hero points are a currency that players have that changes the fate of the story. These points can be used for rerolls, player scene editing, and even modifying or improving a character's powers in a pinch. Hero points are earned by leaning into genre tropes, acting heroically, good role playing, jokes I think are funny, jokes I think aren't funny, and suffering setbacks just like superheroes in other media. And from you, the audience. If you like, follow, or subscribe to our channel during one of our live streams, you are given a hero point that you can give to the hero or game master of your choice. We have gathered some scientific heroes tonight. Say, what's up, heroes? What's up, what's heroes? Up, heroes? Up, heroes? Uh, I want to give everyone a chance to tell us a little bit about themselves, the character they will be playing, and have them answer my question of the day, which is, what does your character want out of life? And we'll start with Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'll be playing Chimera, one of many. Um, what does my character want most in life? Um, a restraining order on the chat. Oh wait, that's what I want most in life. I don't. Chim Chimera doesn't really have wants. He's just there, you know. He's just an active part of the scenery. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Jonesy. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am Jonesy. Uh, tonight, I'll be playing Flynn, um, the captain of the Marion and uh, and debonair captain, space captain, and entrepreneur. That's a good way to put it, right? Um, and what does he want most uh, out of uh, out of life? He wants a uh, he wants adventure, and he wants uh, a, a crew be by his side. He basically wants his band of merry men. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kat. Hey guys, I'm Kat. I am playing uh, one of the Moon Moon twins, Ursa. She, what she really wants out of life is just happiness for both her and then more importantly, Lara. Um, I feel like she is more willing to sacrifice her happiness if it comes with Alara, but I also feel like Alara sort of feels the same way, so that's not really gonna work. Um, yeah, so I'll pass it to Andy. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm here for our Monday I night. I not being digested. That's a good one. <laughs> Second ah. Eh, if it makes Alara happy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andy. I'm here for our Mutes and Masterminds <laughs> shenanigans on Monday nights, as you can obviously tell. I am also, you can find me over on our YouTube channel where I host the Sword Forge series. You can also find me over on our website where I write some blog posts, uh, which I should have one coming up here pretty soon once I get it finalized in my head and written onto the computer. Uh, tonight, I am playing Aelin, our femme fatale of uh, more than one mind. And what Aelin would like most out of life, uh, I'm going to say a family. It's kind of hard for her to have been on her own for as long as she has been. So, well, I mean, as, as alone as she is with her two sisters in her head. Uh, but I would say looking for people that, you know, probably have been lost like her and that she can share adventure and a few other things with and so yeah and with that i will pass it over to calvin okay well hey everyone i'm calvin and i will be playing alara the psychic superhero from the dark side of the moon part of the moon moon twins um i don't know what alara's nickname is i think ursa is a little dipper but i don't know if alara <laughs> is the big dipper because they're the same height <laughs> um yeah here on mondays as well as over on the women's Dice channel where we do a bunch of gaming streams and podcasts though taking a break this week because i have something i need to work on uh for this wednesday <laughs> as for the question of the day what does alara want out of life 
I mean, I feel like if she was to answer this question out loud, it would be the obvious answers. I mean, of course, she wants Ursa to be happy and safe. She wants freedom and all that. But the quiet inside her head answer is vengeance. I know. You got to say it in the voice, Calvin. <laughs> Ven- Wait, no. Yes. She wants vengeance. Oh, God. I can't mix the two of them yet. I'm not, I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> I demand satisfaction, Lord Reynolds. <laughs> Glorious. No, she wants vengeance. <laughs> and I guess I'll pass it back up to Alex. Yeah, I'm Alex. I'll be the GM. And what I want most out of life right now is to come up with a question of the day that Chimera has to answer with something other than I'm Chimera. I don't hey, know. <laughs> stop asking questions that are outside of my character portfolio. No, 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 no. I mean, there is an answer for this for this week. Chimera wants to know why he's not the only one of his kind now. Mm. Mm. Well, okay, but can he's he has a mild curiosity. He's not wants it <laughs> most in life. Mm. Although that Conan meme from you know Discord yeah. earlier, that's pretty appropriate. That is pretty appropriate. <laughs> but the fact that that would be the only thing that you're mildly curious about would be would you know trump everything else. So it would be the thing that you would want most in life. Tune Since in next week. Want anything we else? New, as we start a new Thursday uh, evening stream, what's going on in Chimera's head with Dr. Andy as the psychologist in charge? <laughs> and how does that make you feel? <laughs> I don't. So it's Chimera. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Lies. <laughs> Wiki Lies. says Ursa's little dipper and Alara's third twin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, technically the feelings on my head aren't mine. I mean, in case you missed that last week. <laughs> nice. Jonesy, no bad. Just you wait till next. Just wait until later. Tonight's gonna be a good night. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when he says that. Yeah, buckle up, everybody. We're going for a ride. <laughs> so, uh, without further ado, I think we're good to get started. So, last time on Guardians of Haven. Our heroes had some downtime in the great city of Starhaven. They did a number of different tasks. Aelin worked on her network of smuggling and providing for the strays of Starhaven to various degrees of success. Uh, Alara spent some time with Watson and tried very hard to probe some of Watson's secrets to little success. Um, she also tried to keep away from the Farsighters, which was something that Ursa did not do as much as Alara. Ursa went out grocery shopping quote-unquote, multiple times that week, and uh, was spying on the Farsiders and her boothing, Eric, trying to figure out how to get him back and what the situation was with Astaria, uh, their erstwhile third sister that they don't know about. Uh, Chimera went to the library <laughs> and uh, looked for some answers for some preserver technology and things. Didn't find any of the answers he was looking for, but did notice a name. That kept popping up. That name being. Hold, please. It's in my notes. So I get for not writing this down. Uh, Mm -hmm. Bazus Tilren. uh, B A Z U S T I L R A N. um, Who has a number of different theories about what the preservers were up to and things like that. And Flynn went on a date and acquired some. Uh, Fake IDs and contact lenses and basic disguise materials for the twins so they could go out in public without being worried about being caught and executed by the Farsiders. After that, the the Guardians decided that they were going to attend a Preserver Mixer to try to get some information, possibly look for some additional work. Um, Flynn went down and asked for tickets from the person running the event, and that worked out really well. Alara went looking for a contact and found a nice gentleman named Agris from the Engineers Guild who said he had a plus one and his buddy had a plus one, so she offered up her sister as the additional plus one for Agris and Gruk. Uh, Everybody went to the mixer. They had a pretty decent time. They met some interesting characters, including Solo Takashi, who is a former supervillain, now preserver technology reclaimer. Uh, who's the founder of Quasar Industries. They met a wonderful little cultist, or Aelin met a wonderful little cultist, who tried to get them to come over and talk to people at a future point. And... 
Ursa met a dashing young man named Valerius Cornu. There was much shenanigans. Uh, Alara and Ursa wound up in the bathroom trying to trade notes. When they returned, before they returned, there was a job opportunity offered to them by Solo Takashi to go and check out a tomb that seems to have a couple of mummified preservers in it. When Alara and Ursa came back to join the group, that was when Ogris told Zoth Roke, their former torturer, to uh, quit making my girl feel bad. I think that's everything that happened last week. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. We rejoin our heroes as Ogris goes to put his large furry hands on Zoth and try to throw him out. Uh, he reaches up, kind of grabs down. Thank you, Deuce. For that sub, and that's an extra hero point for Alex. That's me. Also, what? thank you, Star Slayer, for uh, resubscribing and for throwing down a table point for Alex. No. <laughs> you just got one. <laughs> <laughs> now he's dead. Now he's dead. Uh, so Ogrins, Ogris goes to put his both of his media hands on Zoth's arms. Zoth smacks them both away. Uh, hits him in the throat with a large, flat hand, knocks him over, and kicks him in the soul plex. Shit. Okay. Um, don't want to reveal myself to Zoth. Gotta save Augurus. Mind. I'm going to reach out into Augurus's head and just say, stop it. <laughs> uh, you reach out into his mind, the first thing you get is, Ow! Everything hurts. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Just stop it. Say you got him mixed up with someone else. This is your conscience speaking. <laughs> Why do you sound like Laura? <laughs> My conscience is female and British. Wow, I did not know that about myself. Actually, it's a moon accent. <laughs> So what you gotta do? <laughs> <laughs> Head all down there to the moon, Mark. <laughs> and Space uh, Alabama. As you start filling his head with this thought, he uh, he kind of holds his hands up, and uh, Zoth looks at Solo and says, "Please make sure to dispose of this trash. I don't want to see this person in my presence again." And he. Turns around on his heel and he begins to walk out with his arms crossed behind his back. Um, Valerius, and she'll turn on her big puppy dog eyes. Can you go make sure that nothing too bad happens to my sister's date? Yeah, do you want me to stay with him while we get the ambulance here? That would be good. Yeah, certainly. Perhaps we can catch up on this matter uh, another time. Yes. Thank you. And he will Uh, hand you his smart comm and ask if you can put your number in there so he can get a hold of you later. She will dial (laughs) 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 8675309. How do you know that's my number? I'm just kidding. She'll put in her number. Even she... <laughs> wow. <laughs> awesome. So, um, Alara is going to go over to Augurus's side if Zoth has moved on. Yeah, he seems to be making a uh, beeline for the exit. Not in a rush, but. Okay. Um, she'll at least try to help him onto his feet. Uh, that was very brave and, well, not very bright. Are you okay? That guy fucking sucks. <laughs> yes, he does. I really should have warned you not to mess with him. I didn't think you would. He was making you uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, but, you know, there's plenty more things I can do here. It's a party, after all. I don't have to go next to him. Just... I, I appreciate what you did. Thanks. Um, I think I'm going to go 
get checked out because he punched me really hard in the neck. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to do that. Go walk it off. And Valerius will come over at that point and he'll sort of put an arm around Ocarus's back and say, how about we get you over to, uh, get you out here and get you over to the Daedalus Center. Ogris. Yeah. Can you, can you tell Rook that I apologize for how the night went? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell him. Um, and just <laughs> don't do that again. <laughs> Really don't. But uh, thank you for defending my sister. No, you got it. Yeah, I won't go picking fights with that dude ever again. Yeah. Not without a couple of buddies and a bolt bolter. Not sure that would help as much as you think it will. <clears throat> Aelin's going to turn to Takashi. We believe we just witnessed an assault, but an ambassador from the Farsighter community gets away with it? Hmm. Do you want to mess with this diplomatic community? No. I'm already but I'm a shaky sim- standing in the city as it is. I'm going to stick about their new prize horse. No, but we assume you have this area footaged. Yes? Oh yeah, don't worry about that. I've got a she's, leverage. She, she smiles, that little predatory smile. Good. We knew you were a smart one. Thank you for saying smart and not nefarious. Hmm. And she'll, she'll kind of like tilt her head with, the, with that grin and turn back to watching uh, Zoth leave, narrowing her eyes at him. You do see that Zoth runs into a group of Farsight commandos at the door. And the group of them walk away. Can I make an insight check on that group of commandos? Sure. Kind of get a read on them. 26. Uh, It looks like they were were surprised to be coming here and leaving so quickly. They were supposed to be meeting him here, but it does look like they have some news to tell him. Does it look to be good news? Do they look? Do they appear nervous? Uh, no, they seem pretty chuffed with themselves. Mm, okay, so they have good news for their commander. I'll pay attention to that little parlay as long as I can. As Alex goes to modify his volume. Is that better? Yeah. Cool. I don't know why my microphone keeps doing that. I tried to like turn it up, but then when Calvin talked, it was like blasting. <laughs> and oh. I was like, oh god. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it was just you were the next person that talked after I turned it up. Did you say sorry? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Oh, not even on purpose. Yeah, dry up there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's snowing today. I got a shovel. Like, okay, uh, no, that, off topic, off topic. That, that. <laughs> Dang. Cold enough to snow here in PA. It's just <laughs> raining. Mm-hmm. This yeah, is just crap. Give it, bit, <laughs> give it a little bit. Give it a little bit. Give it overnight. 70 degrees. What I want. Um, so, uh, Aelin, are you going to go out and try to eavesdrop, or are you just keeping it on? It looks like they, it looks like he approached them and said, "Come on, we have to go," and they all left together. Okay. Um, no, I'm just gonna kind of, I am gonna kind of head for the door and watch which direction that they head in. Um, kind of making it look like I'm mingling amongst the group, amongst the patrons as I as I do so. Um, so I can. Do you want me to make a roll? Uh, yes, please. Go ahead and give me a stealth check. Alrighty. Or do you want deception? Uh, either way. However you want to handle it. <clears throat> Alright. 31 on deception. Yeah, that's how you want to handle it. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> um, with a 31 on deception, you're able to make your way to the door without causing too much of an issue. And you do see, uh, as you sort of poke your head out to keep an eye out, it looks like Zoth and the commandos go to the end of the building where there's an alley. 
Uh, it looks like the commandos have something in a sled, a hover sled behind them. It looks like a small round robot. Um, Zoth talks to them briefly um, and seems to give them some kind of affirmative message. And the commandos will duck down the alley and start making their way away. And Zoth heads in a different direction? Mm-hmm. Okay. You have keen hearing, though, so if you give me a perception check, you might be able to hear him. Okay. Yeah, I... 25. Uh, with the 25, you hear Zoth and the far and the commandos uh, speaking. Uh, the commandos say, we've acquired the robot we need in order to get into the green well. We just need your approval, sir. And uh, Zoth says, you have it. Uh, operation begins immediately. Don't return without the moonstone. Hmm. Ears twitch. Hang out, mingling at the front of the of the group for a bit, and then head back towards uh, towards my crew, or towards the crew, because they're not my crew. Just specifically, I'm not the commander. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what are Flynn and Chimera up to while this is going on? Standing stoically on the bridge, I'd imagine. <laughs> He's just warping around. Yeah. Um. Yeah, just trying to keep an eye on things, waiting for um, people to report back in. So. Cool. Um. Well, Alan, you're able to return with that message pretty easily enough. Um, go to our host and say, we have had a lovely evening. I must, we must speak with our friends. Certainly. Oh. It was been, sure uh, it's been an interesting meeting, you folks. I'm interested in our future business pro prospects. We would ask that you send us the tasks. Concrypted, of course. Of course. And he sort of Thanks. turns to one of the uh, one of the women running around in the outfits and seems to have some kind of mental conversation with her and she takes off to go seemingly prepare the encrypted messages for you guys. And uh, so Aelin will take the group off to the side and she'll look at uh, Ursa and Alara and she's got a mischievous shitty and grin on her face. Would you like to get back at him? Yes, of course, but Good. obvious. Oh. Follow us. Have, have, <laughs> you, oh, have you found something? <laughs> She'll swish her tails as she uh, like starts heading for the door. Well, you might have to follow us to find out. Uh, Lara's curiosity is peaked. She will glance at Ursa before following. Ursa sort of like raise her eyebrows up and follow as well. Aelin won't. She won't get too far ahead. When she'll she'll turn to turn around and and talk to them over her shoulder. Your friend met up with some commandos outside. He told them the operation was a go. That they had they had the robot to get into the Greenswell. Something about a moonstone. I don't think we don't think. He should get what he wants. Alara sort of perks up. Did they say Moonstone specifically? That is what we heard. And we have very good hearing. Uh, did, did they say where it is in the, in the Greenswell? That is our assumption as they needed a robot to get into that section. So, what is our plan, then? They're not expecting us. We could lie in wait, take 
stuff from them before they can return? Yes, take the robot or whatever we, the robot or whatever we need. We we have to get the moonstone. Aelin will uh, raise an eyebrow. It's just it is very important. extremely. Hmm. And she'll she'll she purse her lips. Research on the moonstone. It's not important like to us. And she'll look at Alara like, bruh. <laughs> 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 oh no, my one weakness. Um, <laughs> oh. Aelin will kind of purse her lips and then she'll look back at Flynn. What do you say, Captain? Have, uh, have we overstepped our bounds or is this a worthy pursuit? Good question for Alex. Sure. What do I know of the Moonstone? Have I ever heard of it before? You have the well-informed advantage, so go go ahead and give me an investigation or persuasion check. Uh, with a ten, you know sort of generally about the moonstone is that it's a magic rock that supposedly grants the amazing powers of the uh, lunar royal family. It's also said to be missing, and an object of immense ire to Lady Selene. There are credits to be had. Um, there are credits to be had. No, and then uh, I look back at uh, my my my, uh, my uh, team. Uh, I know, by no means, would be overstepped. I think we should definitely follow this lead. We thought so. Is why we pulled you out of the meeting so quickly. We don't want to fall too far behind. So they had a robot. Did you get a look at this kind of this robot? We did not wish to reveal ourselves. From afar, I will say, Aelin, you <clears> noticed <throat> that it was sort of like a beach ball sized robot made of seemingly gray stone. It was a ball of stone. Strange for a robot, really. Well, off we go then. Yes, uh, lead the way. Don't want to fall too mm. far behind. Let's see here, somebody acquiring Chimera. I, I mean, I went back and grabbed the entire mm. group. Yeah. Okay. And I'm assuming Chimera follows yeah. me when I say, hey, follow. Yes. <laughs> of course I do. Oh, we just it's left. <laughs> He's the life of the party. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Aelin will say, we saw the general direction they began, but we may have to do more digging to follow their trail. Excellent. Well, as you all leave the party, you do see uh, Agris and Gruck. Uh, Gruck is standing on the hood of his Corvette, on his the hood of his convertible speeder, uh, yelling at a couple of different people. If you think my buddy's paying the fee for an ambulance, you're out of your goddamn mind. Get in the car, smooth skin, and we're gonna drive on down to the hospital. So sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. I did not know. Alara's like whispering to Ursa. And Valerius is like, are you saying that my smooth skin is insult worthy? Is that what? Never mind. I, I'm coming with you. The hell you are, you lady snatcher. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it worked once. Alara <laughs> is going to shove her way into Gruck's mind and say, <laughs> stop it! Cut it out! <laughs> stop just, being like, rude! They one day and they're like, does your conscience ever talk to you as like a British dude? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you say stop it and Gruck immediately sort of goes sort of slack-jawed, looks around and uh, 
minutes. Let's get in the car. Okay, we're going. There you go. That's a nice lad. And Agris is laid down in the back seat, and Valerius gets into the passenger seat, and they are ro they roar off into the night to go get him some medical treatment. They're about to be BFFs. <laughs> we need a side adventure with those three now. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I'm here for it. It's gonna be my next blog post. Yes. <laughs> Just the car ride there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wiki says one shot. Okay. <laughs> sure. As long as it's not Alex running it. <laughs> Welcome wow. to Guardians of Haven Season Point Five, Part Two. Part twenty seven. <laughs> Electric movie. Um, so you guys go down the alley where the far side commandos are. Or were. And you do see they have left, but it might be possible for some of you to track them. Um, would I be able to? Oh, I mean, well, I wouldn't know if there were any of the ones that I had mined red before, so. I don't have mind tracking. Hmm. At least should, though. You can try to power stunt it if you want. Uh, As out of character reminder, they were leaving the engineering guild with that robot when you saw them earlier. Or oh, so I could suspect that it's probably the same. Okay. Mm. Well, if no one else has a better idea, I can try to do mind radar. Bing. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Here is the hero point, so I can do the stunt. You don't want to go fatigued. Mm. Wait, so, how long is fatigue? Like, like an hour to recover? Yeah, an hour of non non activity to recover. Mm. I'll be fine. What's the worst that could happen? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's the one of the two twins that have been just <laughs> annihilated. I promise nothing is going to try to swallow you guys today. Today. <laughs> yet. yet, yet, yeah. See, we're fine in this step, alley. <laughs> step, step on, mangle, butcher, spindle, mutilate. Those are those are all. For... I said swallow. I didn't say any of the other bad verbs. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that in mind, wow. Um, Alara is going to open up her range of mind reading trying to get a lock on probably the one of the ones that she might have looked at earlier if she expects them to be in the same crew uh give me a perception check and i really want to know what this looks like as what what kind of what does the panel look like as alara is opening herself up to mind traffic like reading minds through time so one hand has fingers to her temple the other has her hand like up in the air sort of acting as i guess the focus or the satellite dish of this telepathic power and i suppose on the comic panel we would see these purplish rings like waves uh, emanating off of her as we zoom out each frame to a wider shot of the neighborhood of starhaven that we are in uh probably catching a few disparate waves of other conversations and thoughts going on trying to piece through them to one that sounds familiar with a check of 25. that's a pretty good check so you uh, you open yourself up to these sort of leftover echoes of people's thoughts, and you do lock on to uh, the person whose mind you read earlier. Uh, you see it sort of pops up as this almost indistinct um, sort of light blue trail to your eyes that you are able to follow away from Quasar Industries. So there's like a bit of a glow to her eyes, and she'll say, I have them. And she will start moving forward. Do I really not have a map of Starhaven for you guys? Yeah, I do. Okay. And you are heading in the southwest direction of the city. Uh, making your way through sort of the remnants of the civilized parts of town as you make your way. And eventually you do come across... Um, as Alara is leading the way, uh, you come to down into this um, 
sort of this twisting divide between the central hub and the green well that is completely blockaded off. There's a bunch of concrete barriers, uh, there's a couple of energy fields around. You see a couple of Aegis security personnel who are keeping an eye on things from various watchtowers and a number of signs that say uh, Greenwell under blockade per order of the Senate. Uh, but you are able to follow the trail of the commandos which leads uh, pretty much up against the wall uh, and down around away from the security forces. I do need a stealth check just to see if you guys are spotted by the Aegis forces. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> So stealthy. Uh, the, the dice always start off so brutal. I don't know if I'm ready for this yet. 36 minutes in and the first die is being cast. <laughs> well, I got a 23. I got a 20. 22. Yeah. I'm pretty good. I'm both impressed and alarmed. Ooh. Okay, Jonesy. <laughs> <laughs> Chill. <laughs> the rogue what? part of a charming rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Not the charming got, part. Got a 21. <laughs> Yeah, I end up with a thirty, which is you know, it's what I do. Yeah, I'm sne- it, it, I it sneaky. I sneaky when I need to be sneaky. Well, all I have is good news, guys. You were evade uh, notice by the authorities, so nobody's going to arrest you for trespassing. Yay! Um, <laughs> as you follow down, you come into a couple of different uh, abandoned buildings that haven't been cleared out just yet. It seems to be a, a not necessarily a gap in the age of security perimeter, but an area that isn't currently being patrolled. Uh, you're sort of following through. You can see where they're sort of cycling, and it looks like the commandos have picked this time as the perfect time to cut through the wall. Uh, you see there's a hole that's been bored through one of the concrete barriers. It still looks fresh, uh, sort of that glowing orange, like a lightsaber cut a hole in it, um, sphere that you're able to pass through and into the green wall if you so wish. Yeah. Moving. Awesome. You pass into the Greenwell, which is the southwest corner of Starhaven, and what the residents consider to be the most dangerous district. Um, there are a couple of districts that are full of sort of overlapping natural biomes, like you saw when you were delivering the eels for Mama Kiger. This one is like that, but it's full of strange, never before seen mutations and other strange preserved experiments that seem to have gone rogue. Uh, the Senate blocked it off because it's not safe for habitation, and they're working on trying to come up with crews who can come in here and clear out some of the areas. Um, most of the neighborhoods as you're passing through are still the gray concrete uh, preserver um, construction you're used to seeing. However, as you're following the trail of the commandos, you start to see, you start to first hear and feel bass music playing. Um sort of a steady, rhythmic rave music, it almost feels like. And up ahead, the sort of natural darkness of this district that's been without power for quite some time, you start to see sort of various colored neons, uh, pinks and oranges and blues start to uh, vibrate, uh, start to flash and pulse uh, ahead of you. And that's when you start hearing blaster fire. Well, Aelin wants to run up and see where all that's coming from because she probably heard all this before everybody else. <clears throat> yeah, Aelin definitely would have heard it before everybody else. Um, so she'll sprint ahead Excellent. a little bit to... Ah. Roll 20's not catching up. Roll 20, catch up. Oh, I need tokens. Duh. Those, those would be helpful. Well, I'm going to let you run in before, uh, okay. before I have you well, call she's, for, before I call she's for gonna, initiative. Yeah, she's going to run up and, and like hit a corner and to look around and see what's going on. Excellent. As you come in and hit the corner, you see uh, the squad of five commandos. 
that are currently pinned down in this neighborhood that is kind of flowing with electric neon light. Um, they've got their blasters open, they're firing on uh, targets that you can't quite see at the moment. Uh, the robot is still buzzing around behind them. Okay. And I will and they... move you over to the map. It looks like they're firing up into up into some of the buildings. Uh, it doesn't seem like any fire is coming back towards them, however. But they're firing at something, and they're attention is completely trained on whatever it is they're assaulting yes okay and at this point i would like for you guys to roll for initiative for me and click on your token first please um yeah everybody should be on the far right no i, I almost got my token mixed up with person <laughs> ah. twins man Oh, or did I? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You're good. Oh, okay. Oh, there. You just... How did you roll that bad? Oh. A natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me about my initiative. <laughs> Not here to be fast. No, I'm here no. to be smart. Ask well, me about my initiative. That could be a bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't ask me about my initiative. <laughs> we don't talk Origins, about initiative. Origins 22, here we go. <laughs> uh, and, and, the, and the image underneath it is the fighter in full plate mail. <laughs> <laughs> I will say it was what? And then we can have the, the counter badge, which has overdrive on it and says, ask me about my initiative. There you go. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move us over to the roll 20 overlay for the folks at home. But I do my best to squeeze everything in here. I like the cyberpunk map. This is awesome. I was pretty excited about it. And uh, it is very strange for this neighborhood to have this much light and this much noise. Um, before we get started, Aelin will kind of look back to the group, motioning them forward. They are distracted. We could procure their device and leave them none the wiser. Uh, if that's what we want to do, I could put up an illusion so they can't tell that we've taken it. And I can take it without getting close to it. Aelin just th smiles back with that kind of predatory grin. She goes, excellent. <laughs> well, Flynn, you're up first. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like we have the beginnings of a plan. Um, so with that, I am going to attempt to and, and they're firing ahead of us, not at the building the next to right. Right, right. They're directly ahead of you. I'm just going to get over to the side over here and draw my weapon and just be ready in case they need to uh, start open firing on these guys. Awesome. Yeah, the uh, soldiers don't seem to be paying you guys any mind. Chimera. Uh, could you enlarge my token, please, and then place me in a position where I am providing cover to Aelin and the other people who just happen to be Yes. A big chimera gets between you and the bad guys. <laughs> That's it. Awesome. All right. Anyone over to you. Well, the first thing I would like to do 
assessment is really just going to give me their stats, but can I use that to try to figure out exactly what it is they are they are firing at, or at least try to ascertain what it is they're firing at? Um, or a perception check. Okay, I can do that instead. Nineteen. You don't see what they're firing at, but you do hear this sound that sounds like crunching glass. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and that it sounds pretty loud in her ears, I would mm -hmm. imagine. Yes. She's kind of... Um, the Moon Moon twins probably see her ears uh, twitch and flatten a little bit. And... Uh, she will she'll mention that that they seem to be fighting something that is either stepping on glass or is made of glass and she's not sure and then she will see what i can do I'm trying to think what else andy do you have accurate hearing um yes yes i do um, you notice that that breaking glass sound sounds like it's coming from the direction they're shooting, and it's coming from all around you guys. Hmm. So it's not just... Uh, so it's more than one location that yes. it's coming from. It's not echoing? No, it doesn't sound like echoing. It sounds like it's happening simultaneously all over the place. Okay. Um, so she will say to everyone else, we think we may have walked into something's trap. We should retrieve what we're after as quickly as possible, lest we find ourselves much like our, the Farsiders in front of us. And uh, I am going to prep. Can can I prep a daze uh, if one of the soldiers happens to notice us? Yeah, sure. Okay. Because I can daze with deception. Excellent. Ursa. Um, so I want to take the robot, but I want to do that under, like, with Alara's help. Um, so do I move, like, would I wait for Alara's turn? Yeah, you can uh, You can hold until Alara goes so you can uh, act with Alara. Okay, cool. I rolled better. Hmm. The uh, Farsiders are going to spread out, and they keep uh, firing up. Uh, looks like they're grabbing cover. Uh, give me a perception check, everybody. And these guys are going to protect the robot. 18. 12. 13. 22. Chimera sees. Uh, Chimera, you're the only one who sees exactly what happens. The rest of you, uh, you see this guy uh, fires up into the air. And what you see is a blast of similarly colored light comes out and hits him. Chimera, you see he hits the wall up here, and it bounces off and comes back and strikes him. Wait, what? Um, maybe I had the map too zoomed in. Where does it hit the wall? Um, it hits the wall up here, and it bounces back and hits him. Okay. I will, well, I guess on my turn. And he goes down. But it was definitely a reflection, not someone shooting back at him. Yes, that's the impression you get. And then some other creatures get to go. And those of you who are looking towards the Farsiders, you do see um, the air sort of warps and scintillates, almost like, almost like a cracking glass or a refracting mirror. And a couple of these strange humanoid shapes appear. Uh, they materialize next to some of the Farsiders. Uh, they're kind of covered in this... They're either made of this strange glowing blue and teal glass or they're covered in it. It's a little hard to tell. Uh, they're wielding these uh, bucklers that have a long glowing blue spike on the end. They've got a gun of some description in their other hand and they're sort of um, almost like naked humanoids made of glowing glass. Which I will share with the crowd. Let me know if that's visible. I think I might have broke it. <laughs> I broke it. 
Well, I can see the handout. Nate, he means on. Uh... It's not popping up on my screen, so I've got to. Ooh. Reroll. <laughs> Just gotta edit roll twenty real quick. Cause the folks at home should see too. Pop up is just chewing your There it goes. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, so this thing comes down um, on two of the different far siders and they're going to swing that spiked shield around and try to stab them. One of them's gonna stab one. For a twenty-one to hit, which will hit the far side commandos. An eighteen, so he takes out a far side commando as he comes down, uh, swings the spike shield up, and brings it up under his armor, and he disappears in a shard of broken in a uh, cloud of broken glass. The commando does? The commando and the creature. Oh. Uh, this one raises the little gun mechanism he's got. And fires for a hit with a 23. Um, and once again, this commando explodes in a cloud of glass, and this one disappears and goes somewhere else. Um, but the weapon he's holding, it sort of... Um, it expands to show a number of different barrels, and each of them fires out this sort of glowing blue glass that slams into the Farsight Commando, and he quickly pixelates and erupts into broken glass. Alara. Okay. That's terrifying. Hmm. Um. All right, so I was going to do an illusion to make it seem like the thing is still there. Unfortunately, I can only do one person at a... Oh, no. Or is illusion an area effect power? Uh, if you... I was able to put selective on it, so I don't know if it needed the... I also couldn't put an area on it, so I think it is already an area. I think it is perception area already. Okay. I should know that. Let me double check real quick. <laughs> There's a lot of rules in this here game. Illusion, page 163. I think maybe it might have its own specific area um, extra. Uh, your illusion occupies an area with a maximum volume rank equal to your effect rank. So it is automatically an area of effect. Okay, well I got rank 8, so it should be more than enough to cover yep, yep. Uh, the size of the sphere. So... Yep, just going to make an illusion of the robot still being present. Um, I do want to get in these guys' brains, but not yet. Let's get rid of the robot first. So, yeah. Let's throw up that power of Mind Illusion, which I believe they have to roll to save against. So that would be a DC of 18 for that power. Um, a will save... Yeah, I believe it's a will save. Uh, they are too busy pissing their pants to worry about that robot. Perfect. So after doing that, then she will mentally communicate to Ursa, go for it. Okay. But I just roll a telekinesis check? Uh, you don't even need to roll. Uh, the robot isn't able to resist you, and they're not paying attention. So where do you want to bring the robot? Um, I would imagine that I'd bring it back to where, the alleyway where we are. So if we want to turn around and get away, we can. Awesome. Do you uh, bring it right over next to you? Yeah. Cool, cool, you, you're cool. making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring it like back behind us, like back where Aelin is. So like almost off map. Okay. I don't know why I won't let me move it now, but... Um, but yeah, that's where it is. <laughs> awesome. So as you move it over there, I'm going to give everybody a hero point. Uh-oh. <laughs> because we thought of such a cool plan? No, because that robot doesn't like being kidnapped. Oh. Uh, it, kind of, <laughs> it kind of 
kind of hovers over next to where Ursa is. Uh, it makes this high-pitched R2-D2 scream, and then it explodes. Oh. No! <laughs> um, I need probably everybody. Uh, come on. <laughs> I need everybody but Flynn to roll a uh, dodge save, please. Area of effect, so... Yep, area of count. effect, so evasion counts. Uh, you're looking for a 20 for the initial dodge save, and then the damage is 25. Woo! 20, 21 on my dodge save with evasion, too. <clears throat> Uh, evasion. Oh, evasion two. 23. And I can't remember if I have evasion or not. I think everybody um, passed the dodge save, so I just need a toughness versus DC 20. Okay. And Chimera, if you have impervious 10 or higher, that means you'll be safe. Okay. I am good then. Okay. Mm, that's a bruise. I think mine's a bruise too, right? Because it, it goes to the attacker. Uh, so it's weird because when you're resisting an effect, you're the attacker. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not. Because the one has to actually make the their initial roll. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you're another... fine, Ursa. You didn't take any damage. Uh, Alara and Aelin will take a bruise. Yeah. Uh, when the robot explodes, the commandos look over their shoulder and they say, uh... <laughs> <laughs> A little help here. Mm. Oh, I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> and the creepy factor just went up by about twelve. Oh Her no! Um, and, they, and they say I'm the creepy one. <laughs> it could be creepy some. It doesn't have to be oh. just one. Um, Ursa, did you want to take a move action after your? telekinesis uh, nope <laughs> i'm good right there in that little corner <laughs> telekinesis the robot the robot explodes i'm done i'm not i'm not mind touching anything anymore <laughs> on the next one. <laughs> um flynn you do have a held action if you want to take it at the end of the round yeah i'm just gonna i don't know i don't want to shift my okay initiative cool and i think chimera had held action as well um I was really hold. I just sort of moved into defensive position and just. Okay. So I'll let that fly. Let that slide. Cool, yo. Aelin, did you have a held action? My high. Um, uh, I had prepped the, uh, the days. Right, 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 right. With deception, um. Kind of doesn't seem like it's worth it now, so we'll just <laughs> we'll let we'll let that uh, we'll let that turn slide and we'll just start something new this round. Awesome. Agrik, I think you're correct about that. Um, they don't need to resist your illusions unless they have a reason to resist it. So if oh. if they um, if they interact with it and then something's if it doesn't act the way they think it should act, they would have to roll. But uh, Flynn, over to you. Um, I don't like these guys, but I also don't want to see them all just get punked. Um. Do I see any more of those those shiny guys? Uh, give me a perception check. The drawn men. Fifteen. You're sort of looking over there, and you see a couple of spots where you think they could be, but they sort of blend in with the environment. Um, everything's kind of weird and scintillating and strange. Uh, you could take a shot, but you're going to suffer a penalty for cover, basically. Well, uh, this glow is coming from various neons and stuff right yes do i think that if i explode some of the neons that the gas may make it easier to see them you think for a hero point that could be the case that's what i like to do <laughs> i uh, love this plan and so yeah that's that's going to be my action i'm just going to be trying to shoot up some of the 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 neon and something anything else i think that like if i see pipes that might be you know filled with gas or, or something that kind of help make it so they can't blend in as easy that's going to be what i'm going to do excellent go ahead and give me a um give me a range combat skill check just to see how high you can get it and i'll let you know what kind of benefit you get Sixteen. 
Uh, with a 16, you are going to be able to eliminate their cover advantage as you sort of distort the areas that you can that they're sort of blending into. Um, or if you want, you can make it so it's easier to traverse through the area for your friends. No, I, I want to definitely make it sure that everyone can see them easier. So. Awesome. Cool. So, Flynn, you uh, pull out your flintlock, you start popping off shots, bursting neon, bursting pipes, uh, gas and steam is going everywhere, making things very scary over there in that corner <laughs> of the sidewalk. Uh, did you want to move as well, or are you happy hanging out where you're at? I'm, I'm happy hanging where I'm hanging. Excellent. Chimera. Okay. Uh... All right. Uh, I will relay in as much detail as I can what I saw with the whole reflection thing and try to indicate to them where the reflection came from. Uh, I don't know if you want, like, some kind of... Uh, red diplomacy. Uh, I don't know. Th I guess th how well I relay that. Like, uh, I don't know. You want like an insight or something, or? Uh. Yeah, or an expertise tactics maybe. Mm, I don't have that. An expertise engineer, but that's my only expertise. Mm. I uh, insight then I think would be. And 22 is the magic number. Even though I have different modifiers, it's all 22s today, baby. Yeah, it's a pretty good day. <laughs> uh, with the 22, you're able to sort of indicate, hey, I saw the beam hit the wall up here and then it bounced back. Um, and you sort of let the team know that this is possibly something that can happen elsewhere. So... Thanks to Chimera's insight, each of you will get a plus two circumstance bonus to avoid being tricked this round and i will also point out that we are currently in a cluster that invites area attacks and we should endeavor to move to more tactical positions so i will delay moving until a limb moves excellent fireball formation <laughs> exploding robot formation <laughs> wiki oh my god <laughs> awesome um Aelin, over to you um i'm going so to have awkward. i'm gonna have Aelin move up and take cover i'm assuming that's like a planter or some other type of uh wall yep yep section okay uh she will take up cover there I am going to make a perception check with my hearing, since mm -hmm. it is accurate, to see if I can't uh, pinpoint one of their locations. Sure. Give me a perception check. 25. Uh, you hear a couple of things. You're able to zero in on their locations being where they are on the map, so you can, okay. make, a, you can make an accurate attack against them. Uh, you also hear... Um, it sounds like they might be speaking to one another in this sort of weird, broken gravel language, but one word pops out to you, and that is Hansha. H-A-N-S-H-A. -S -S -A. Hansha. Um, she will file that away as an important piece of information. And then, if I can pinpoint them, and if I can make an accurate attack, am I also able to potentially do a faint sure okay i will attempt to faint the one to the north with the red dot on it this is not an agile faint this is just a normal faint so it's just a straight up deception check that is a 32 wow and that's opposed by insight or deception or will whichever is or highest. will yep well i got a 14 so they're bamboozled. Uh, I believe that makes uh, them um, just hindered and vulnerable, right? I don't think there's a correct. I don't um, think there's a fourth condition for or a fourth degree for faint. But as I have set up three, I will transfer that bonus to Ursa, Alara, and Flynn. And that's the northernmost one, right? The one with the red dot, which now has an orange dot as well. Yeah, that orange dot signifies that he's really easy for you guys to hit. There you go. What does the uh, faint look like as you? Um. The faint for, from this distance, it's more of one of those. Um, she's pointing out 
she she levels her blaster out in that direction um and instead of instead of it being a uh it looks like it's supposed to be a shot but instead it's more like a targeting laser uh mm. piece the scope uh the scope flares out and the little reticle uh basically paints the area so it, they were you know everything looked like she was lining up a shot to specifically uh take them out and instead it's just a hi you're a big target now it looks real happy about that mm-hmm uh, the Farsiders, one of them is going to duck here behind Chimera, because he's big and good to hide behind. And he will pop a shot over Chimera's shoulder at the one up there. Pew, 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 pew. That's a 12. That's not going to hit. Uh, this one is going to rush down here behind this tree, taking cover, and take a shot at the same one up there. 17 is not going to hit, and this one is going to fall back. The best he can do is three squares because it's hindered terrain through here. You see, he looks like he's almost like drunk, stumbling out of this area. He looks very confused, like his legs aren't agreeing with his body. This one is going to materialize over here behind Aelin. Or, no, this one's going to materialize behind Flynn. No, do not materialize behind Flynn. Not, <laughs> <my phrase. laughs> not a phrase I enjoy. <laughs> I, he gets a 24 to hit your parry, DC. Unfortunately, he misses. No, I'm, uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wish. I need a toughness save versus a DC 21. 23! Oh, you're fine. He stabs you in the cape. No, not the cape! It's <laughs> ah! even worse. That cape was expensive! <laughs> should have been me! It should have been me! <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll use move by action to teleport back over here. Uh, the one that is vulnerable is going to teleport down. That's the one that's going to attack Aelin. Since Aelin was kind enough to shine a big laser beam in his face. Uh, but a 13 is not going to hit Aelin. Dodge to the left. And then he'll teleport back over there. Slide to the right. Yep. Lara, over to you. Okay. Well, I did want to blast these dudes, but seeing that the team is in danger from these weird droid things, I got to double check. Oh, obviously. Um, can I still see? the creature to the that has the dots on it the red and the orange dot yes can i perceive it i should say okay uh then while it's vulnerable i'm gonna give it the crouch with a mind crush well bad news laura uh-oh it's immune to being mind crunched oh no <laughs> robot Well, but I'll give you a hero point for your troubles. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> well, since I'm getting one, uh, you can probably take it right back because I'm going to then instead use an action to do some mind reading on the closest Farsighter Commando and see if I can't get... I'm not going to get a stone location or anything, but I'm just going to see if I can figure out what their ambition was here. At the very least. really need a support thing for when I can't actually help. Or just a blaster. Mm. Work on it. There's a couple of blasters lying around over there if you want to go pick one up. Um, mm, tempting. Well, this is my standard action, so on my move action I'll do that. But for now, I'm just going to see what I can get from this guy, and then I'll move towards where the blaster is. Cool. Assuming there's anything to get... Well, I got good news. It does have a mind. It's just immune to will effects. How's that good news? <laughs> it's not good news at all. <laughs> it's just news. <laughs> That's just news. <laughs> um, so it'll roll save. Uh, it will succeed on its save versus your mind reading check. Oh, sorry. No, I was mind reading the Firesider Soldier. Oh. Then I've given you too much information. <laughs> That's okay. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, the far side commando, you're, he fails the initial will save, so then it's an opposed check versus his will and your mind reading. Yep. I am an open book. Read me. Yeah, that's 23 <laughs> minus 9 is a difference of 14, so you get 3 degrees. Uh, you get surface thoughts, which is, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Um, Just flip through those like a book. Yeah. <laughs> it makes a cartoon of him pooping his pants. Um, you get some short-term memories, which are uh, sort of leading back through acquiring the robot, uh, meeting with Zoth tonight, and being instructed to come out here and don't return without the Moonstone. That's the exact verbiage you get from uh, Zoth. And then the long-term uh, memories you sort of get from him are a lot of a lot of formulative stuff about how he came to be in service of Lady Lunar's military. Uh, you see he was conscripted as a child and forced to become a soldier. Um, and he's not happy about this exact situation. Also, his name is Chip. Oh, don't give him a name, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my brother, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> it's a C-H apostrophe P. No, he's a Green Lantern. Really? <laughs> <laughs> It's a space game. Everything has an apostrophe. Okay, and I will oh, use oh. I will use my move <laughs> action. <laughs> Depends on what part of space. Um, oh, I'll use my move action to go to wherever the blaster is. Uh, awesome. Any of the three dead guys have a blaster? Oh, all the way out there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not doing that. Uh, this guy has a blaster, too. You could probably convince him to give it to you with uh, mind powers. Yeah, no, he can actually shoot. <laughs> I'm just gonna not stand so close to everyone. Um, here's probably good. Is that like a space there? Yeah, you could. It's sort of a um, it's a doorway into the building behind you. Okay, I'll take cover behind this fire hydrant. <laughs> Stuck down. <laughs> uh, Ursa, over to you. Okay, she'll step up into this little area here and she wants to take the one that's not hurt um, and she wants to lift it up with her mind and slam it into the ground fair <laughs> you want telekinetic blast yes please 26 awesome i don't think either of them are hurt i think just one of them is vulnerable oh. well yep. the one without the dots on it excellent uh 26 <laughs> will hit I specifically make it easier for you and you avoid it. Okay, I see how this is. <laughs> I'm feeling yeah. resonant all over again. Uh, it gets a 24, so it will take a bruise as you slam it into the ground. Okay, I'm going to spend a hero point because I want to do it again. <laughs> awesome. Oh, man. Well, 16 does... My luck point. Oh, does it hit? It does not hit, no. Oh, okay, I'm going to spend my luck point. And then I'm done. Well, that's a 26 again. Hey, that's a good <laughs> thing. However, this one's going to use this reaction to try to do something. Don't do that. Uh, it's going to use its deception ability. And it gets a plus two circumstance bonus with its favorite foe advantage. And you should make an insight check for me, uh, Ursa. She gets a bonus to this, I think. Because... Yes, yeah, so a plus two circumstance bonus for... Jonesy. God damn it. Hey, but this is the 13 with the plus two. Ow. <laughs> Which is the reverse three. of what it got. <laughs> Holy crap. You know, honestly, it tracks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Ursa, you fire off that telekinetic blast. Uh, the first one, it slams down. It kind of looks at you, its eyes narrow, and you hear this sort of screaming, crunching gravel noise. The next telekinetic blast, you sort of reach it out, and... We've got, what, one, two, three, four of you? What? Uh, Aelin. Oh, no. Does the 26 hit your dodge, DC? Very much so. Can I pose? I need a toughness save, Chimera. <laughs> oh, that all over the place. <laughs> For just such a time as this, I have been standing by. 
All right. Ah, I have too many character sheets. All right. This is the right one. There it is. <laughs> There's the rolls I've been expecting all night. No, why don't you go ahead and help yourself a hero point back? Because that's a bunch of crap. <laughs> Random <laughs> interpose shot. Son of a bitch. With <laughs> the same damn number. But it's now a 22. <laughs> uh, so that'll be a bruise as Ursa's telekinetic grip sort of locks onto you. She picks you up and slams you down into the ground. Do I realize that I did that? Uh, no, you failed your insight check, so you don't realize that that was you. You? Oh no, one of them has telekinesis. <laughs> <laughs> I will dispose of it promptly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Alright, did you want to move or sir, or are you happy hanging out there? I already moved, I'm good, I'm good. Perfect. Uh, Flynn, over to you. <clears throat> I'll see which ones I can still see. Uh, can I still see the one that's um, got the dot on it? The orange dot? Um, you might. Uh, yeah, you can still see it. It's up from where you are. Okay. Um, then I'm going to. Aim and fire. Perfect. Are you going to use any power attack or anything? Uh, no, I'm just going to use the aim. Right now. Uh, Ooh, that's a My window order shifted. <laughs> oh, I was looking at the map. Oh, no. <sighs> nice. Uh, Very 30, nice. 34 to hit. Actually, higher than that because I aim. So. Yeah, 39 to hit. Perfect. Uh, that'll hit. Do you have multi-attack on those blasters? No, I don't. They're just they're the standard issue blasters off the shelf. Uh -huh. So, no worries. So DC 20. Uh, it doesn't have a bruise. That's the other one that has a bruise. But here we go. Yeah. It gets its first bruise. What happens, uh, Flynn, as you open fire? Um, I, yeah, I just, I've um, got my uh, pistol braced with my other arm and just going to let a slow breath and pop off a shot and, and it just uh, hits it and crack, sends cracks through its shoulder plate. Excellent. And it, in turn, roars at you. Do you want to move, Flynn, or are you happy hanging out? Uh, I don't want to move, but I do want my back against the wall. Okay. So that at least can't stab me in the back. <laughs> I want to see the stab coming through me. Stab me in my front, <laughs> not in my cape. <laughs> hmm. Excellent. So you brace yourself against the wall. You've got your front lock. Uh, Chimera, over to you. All right. So this one has made himself a nuisance. So I think it's time to reach out and touch someone. No, that's my body. <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, you said the thing. <laughs> hey, we're, we're back to 22s again. How about a 22 to hit? Uh, 22 will hit. All right, so then I need a toughness save. Uh, because reasons. Because of punches? Yes, toughness, yes. So I'm going to save a 25, and I have fast grab, so, you know, we're going to make all the things happen. Ha ha ha! Take that! I get Sorry. a 5, so that destroys just... that one. Well, what happens is you destroy it. So, attempting to grab, but not realizing, I guess, how fragile the thing is, like, Chimera's hand just sort of punches through the chest plate, and just... <laughs> I seem to have exerted too much force to bring this foe to heal. Just sort of look at Alien and then just drop the thing there. I want to see that red X appear. Come on. I put the red X on it. <laughs> just way in the corner over there. Is that better? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you leap over there, you grab it, you crunch it into... 
uh, sort of this glittering uh, blue sh um, glitter dust. And you definitely are full of fiberglass now at this point, so be careful not to hug anybody. For <laughs> As you can say, fortunately I don't need to breathe, but I guess that's still important. No <laughs> hugging. No hugging. That's okay. Camaro wasn't going to start hugging today anyway, so that worked out. <laughs> not today. Not today. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> and on over to you. <laughs> All right. Um, one still up. We will go ahead and uh, second verse, same as the first. We will make a deception check to faint. That's a 33. That's a pretty good check. Uh, you successfully faint. All right. Uh, I, let's do Chimera, Ursa, and Flynn for this one. On the setup. Chimera, Ursa, Ooh. and Flynn. Okay. Uh, so again, the targeting laser comes up. Uh, yep. You shine the light. You paint it as a new target for your allies. Are you going to move or are you happy hanging out? Um, I'm happy hanging. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm happy hanging out next to Chimera. She's like She goes to reach out, pat him on the shoulder for a good job well done let us all the fiberglass and goes mm, puts her hand back down <laughs> <laughs> awesome we, we see you're all pointy now we should take care of that when this fight is done uh this far side commando still in the difficult terrain is going to crawl up this wall and come over here and he sort of lays on the street and pukes <laughs> he's uh, having a bad time <laughs> These two are going to open fire on the creature. Uh, they both miss. Shocker. And uh, this one, everybody give me a perception check. Perception. Uh, 30. Annie. 13. Jesus. Hey, 22 again. Hey. <laughs> Uh, 11. This is a good kind of rut to be in, I'll take it. you <laughs> together. So, Aelin, Alara, and Chimera, you all notice uh, the creature across the way. It, Aelin, you hear it let out this sort of pitiful noise, and all of you can see these sort of silver mercury tears stream down its face as it phases and disappears into the mirror around it. Oh, creepy. And... That will take us out of combat if you guys aren't going to jump the remaining Farsider commandos. Well, uh, I mean, it, that might not be the rest of us' choice, but then again, there's Ursa <laughs> over there. What do you mean, Ursa? Alara's the one. <laughs> there's Ursa and Alara over there. It's up to Ursa. It's up to Alara. It's Alara's turn. <laughs> yep. Crunch. <laughs> this sort of like no. mind connects with Alara and is like we could try to get them on our side maybe we'll try it your way you <laughs> you are the one that always wants to make friends <laughs> sure we'll try it your way for now but afterwards we'll need to deal with them because they've seen our faces so, try to make friends now, kill them later. <laughs> well, the night is young. <laughs> Maybe they'll die wherever Alex is going to send us. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. <laughs> oh, no, not chip. The fourth wall break inside a fourth wall. <laughs> I can't break the fourth long. wall. I am the fourth wall. Um... So yeah, our heroes stand triumphantly in the middle of the green well, having just dealt with a couple of these strange preserver mirror droids. So I think it's probably a good place for us to go ahead and take our break. We've got a couple of far side commandos who are at the mercy of the Guardians of Haven, and we have a new mystery unfolding. So everybody get up, stretch your legs, grab a drink, grab a snack, and we'll be back in just a second.